Hi, I'm James. I love my Thursday and Fridays because I'm here with my buddy Jordan making these videos and it's just a lot of fun. But let's get to the point for this video. This video is in a series about finishing a Zircad Multi Zirconia Bridge. Now, the application here will work for any Zirconia you use. It can be the 3M, it can be Katana, the Zircad LT, MT, and other Zirconia. So the finishing process in the green state is what we do when that restoration comes out of the milling unit. In addition to that, what we're gonna do with this case is use infiltration. Now, why do I use infiltration? I use it on most of my zirconia. Katana doesn't need it as much because that zirconia has a tendency to be a little lower value once you polish it. But on Zircad MT, or particularly the high strength zirconias, I need to bring down the value, number one, right? And then I wanna increase the multi effect. Now in this case, on the bridge, if you look at the before pictures of the other teeth in the mouth, there's this rich cervical color of dentin and also that nice warm color in the cervical one half of the restoration. We could try to stain and glaze that in. In fact, in this case, we're gonna use the meal but I find that it's better to do my basic color infiltration in the green state, uh, where that's where we're conditioning the restoration. We're internalizing that color in the restoration before we fire, and then we add any type of meal characteristics just to highlight the restorations and make sure they blend in. That's pretty much my flow when I'm working with zirconia. And I do a lot of zirconia in my clinical theater. It's really working out very well now, particularly for posterior bridges. Most of my zirconia bridges I don't do in one appointment. I do want to model. What's nice with the prime scan, and you can do this with Omni as well, but print the model. Now, you have to have a good printer for that, and I have a number of great printers, but my favorite, my very favorite model printer is the Yasiga. They actually sell it through Whitmix in this country. It's out of Australia. The accuracy of this is as good as carbon, which a lot of large labs are using the carbon printer now for really accurate models. It's very predictable as you see in this case, and it's really nice to have a model for finishing. In my hands, finally, finally, I'm to a point where I feel like I can make a posterior bridge in the buckle corridor which is the secondary smile zone, really pop in the mouth. So let's go ahead and get started with the green zirconia finishing, and then we'll get into characterizing with infiltration before we center. For our finishing, we're gonna be highlighting the JK04 zirconia finishing lab kit. To separate that sprue, hold the restoration so it doesn't drop on the lab bench, and then address the sprue from the occlusal. That way we won't catch a margin. This is a carbide burr. That way you protect the margins as you go and then complete the sprue removal using a finishing carbide, which is on the lab kit. The next step in our shaping workflow is using the centered needle diamond. This is used for shaping the inner proximal embrasures the occlusal grooves where we want some refinements. I like to make this an art piece. This is where I use my imagination. Even though the initial mill was excellent using that right needle burr, I still like to refine some of the zones on the occlusal table. As we're shaping here, we're using a RPM of around 10,000. Use a light touch, almost dragging or pulling that diamond burr. That will be more efficient with the control on the zirconia.
We did establish a very solid connector zone, meaning it's very abundant for the case and the material we're using here, Circad MT. This provides more latitude for buckle shaping of those embrasures so we can open those embrasures up. That's the secret on a bridge, opening up the buckle embrasures and that will provide a separation in the appearance of the ponic to the abutments. With the buckle grooves, we'd like to highlight the depth and then round those edges to make it look more natural. taking my time here just so we can demonstrate on the video the process and technique. Once our embrasures and our primary definitions are refined, our final step is to create characterization on the buckle surfaces where we want them. This would be subtle depressions, primary depressions, secondary depressions, and also surface texturing. Here we're using the centered diamond creating some definition, and notice that we use a scribe and scrub technique. Particularly on zirconia, once you scribe it, you scrub it with a really light touch that will soften the definition of our texturing. Then the next step is we'll come back with a twist polisher to neutralize and diffuse these definitions even more. And that will really give it a nice finished look. On the JKO4 lab kit, there's a pink twist polisher. This is excellent for neutralizing the characterization that we accomplished in creating that final pre-centering luster. There's also a beige polisher, which is a higher luster. We only use that if we're not going to infiltrate. In this case, we're going to infiltrate. The reason why is if you polish the green zirconia too high, it will create this enamel-like surface and the infiltration liquids won't penetrate. I find that it penetrates excellent with this pink twist polisher and it's a nice way to finish that final luster before we take it to the furnace. Stay away from the inner proximal contact there on the mesial. We don't want to lighten that inner proximal contact. Polish away from the margins. It's real important that you don't catch these thin margins. They will chip. In the green state, zirconia is like a hard, hard chalk. more work we do now on the green zirconia, the easier it will be to polish it once it comes out of the centering furnace. Pre-polish is a lot more effective when working with zirconia. I am not a huge fan of bonding in zirconia. In other words, today we can prepare zirconia and get an adhesive bond to the tooth. The question is, who's going to remove that one day if it needs to be removed for one reason or another? Here what we're doing is providing internal mechanical retention using a inverted cone. Again, use a very light touch. I think I've said that several times. Make sure the shank of the burr isn't hitting the sides of those margins because they will chip. 
I have not seen too many zirconia restorations come loose over the years, but I have seen it with bridges. In this case, what we're doing is providing that mechanical retention. So when we do cement this with a resin glass ionomer, there'll be mechanical retention and a resin glass ionomer will have some adhesive properties to the tooth. That was simple. Characterizing zirconia. Notice that the flow that we used and the burrs that we used with the JK04 lab kit. What we're going to do now is infiltrate. And I mentioned earlier in the video, we're doing that to improve the multi effect in the cervical area, particularly in the embrasure form of that zirconia. We're going to add some warmth, brown, and even some A2. And also on the internal components of the abutments. And what you will find is that will add a nice color multi effect that will amplify that effect, which is what we needed for this case. Zircad multi has a tendency to be a little bright. So for instance, I wanted more of an A1 for this case. So I used an A2 bridge Zircad multi block. And I find that that is a little bright, whereas Katana is not quite as bright. So let's go ahead and get started with that infiltration process before we pop that into the furnace. Now, in this case, we're going to use the speed fire. It does work really well with these zirconias, the 3M, the Katana, and also Zircad Multi. Now the Zircad LT, I use my long cycle furnace of 12 hours. That's the Programat S1. The one limitation that we do have with the speed fire is the size of the bridge. So if the bridge is too long, it won't fit in the speed fire. And that's where we have to use another furnace. But in most cases, a three unit bridge, particularly with the Multi or Katana or the 3M Zirconia, we don't really want to have that long spanning bridge because we could get into some functional issues. Let's go ahead and get the infiltration started. It's really easy to do. For this case, we're going to use the Zircad LT coloring liquid or liquids. The reason I like them is that they're really forgiving. They're not too intense, so it's hard to make a mistake. Our goal here is to tone down the central grooves, the embrasure form, and particularly the cervical side of the bridge. We need a little more warmth. As we saw there in the initial picture, the cervical side of her other teeth, particularly the lower teeth, have a lot of cervical saturation. The raw Zircad multi doesn't have enough color in it and we could add glaze and colors but it's going to be a little more difficult my goal is to always internalize the colors how many coats you place will depend on how saturated the liquid will perform on a zircad multi-block or katana two to three layers is very effective in adding a nice cervical blend it won't oversaturate as you will see in just a few moments. What we want is just a subtle warmth in the cervical area and the interproximal embrasures between the ponic and the abutments. Internalize the color that will provide a deeper warmth on those margins. If the patient ever gets recession, you won't have that intense zirconia look. The second color that's effective for a multi bridge like this is brown. Brown is a deeper, richer, warmer color at the depths of the pits, the interproximal embrasures between the ponic and the abutments, and particularly on the buckle embrasures. This will help create a separation appearance once it's fired. Now we're ready to go to the furnace. We want to use the wet cycle though. So choose the wet cycle and let the speed fire do its thing. I love to watch the descending, beautiful glow of the Speedfire furnace. You may want to take a cup of coffee. It's almost like a sunrise upside down. There's nothing like it. That glow really is exciting to watch. At least it is for me. That's where I get my rush.
there we have it finishing zirconi in the green state getting that ready to sizzle before we put it into the speed fire so make sure you go ahead and watch the next video and that's using mio to provide that really nice color characterization it's more of a brush on ceramic and there's two components to it. We have the coloring component, which is more like a stain and glaze. And what you see is what you'll get out of the firing furnace. So as you put it on, is what you can expect when you get it out of the furnace. And then on the pink area, we're gonna use a structured material. And that's actually a brush on ceramic. We place that over the color to give it depth. This system is incredible. So you gotta watch the next video. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, you gotta talk to me, feed me. I wanna hear from you, okay? So list those below and let's keep going on this journey. Talk to you later.